Oh lord, what a mistake have I made. Now, I'm not referring to Mushroom the Ruckus just yet, I'm still stuck on the fact that apparently I can't keep a steady upload schedule to save my life. Now, I'll give some explanation as to why this is at the end of the video, but it's not particularly interesting, so I don't want to scare away all the people who actually just want to know how my game did. So, anyway, for those of you who don't know, and I especially wouldn't blame you for not knowing, Mushroom the Ruckus is a top-down hack-and-slash thing where you play as a mushroom, and you have to kill all the other mushrooms. It costs $2 or £1.69, so it's not particularly expensive, and there's also not a content going on there. The reason for this was because I decided that I actually, like, properly cut down on how much time I would spend on this one. So my last project, Masochist, took me about 9 months from start to end. It still didn't have a lot of content because, well, most of that time was just spent removing content, then putting it back in, then taking it out again, and then making it again, but slightly better, and, well, this effectively meant that I wasted a lot of time to create a pretty subpar project because, let's face it, I'm not actually that good. Um, this time, I decided that I'd seriously speed up the dev cycle and just get it done before I could even have time to start hating it. Now, trust me, I still got to that last stage in the, you know, maybe the last week of development or so, but I managed to pump out most of the game before I got there. Mushroom the Ruckus only actually took me a little over one month to create. I started the main character design at about 1am on March 23rd while talking to a friend, and I released the whole game on May the 1st. I think overall, yeah, this is way preferable to spending 9 months on something that's not even that fun to play by most metrics. However, I think I did cut the dev time a little bit short when I maybe could have used some more time. I don't know if more time would have actually helped because, you know, quite frankly, a lot of the things this game focuses on, like story and graphics, uh, well, th those aren't really my strong points. I'm better at, well, programming and slowly getting better at design, but oh boy, is that slow. Anyway, I did find myself working 8 hours a day, plus school, plus social responsibilities for about a month and feeling pretty much obliterated by the end of it. In fact, I still feel a little bit destroyed, just maybe a little less so than, than, I, than I have for the past couple of weeks. And yeah, that's pretty much why I haven't uploaded a video in ages. Um, I don't know why I said I would explain at the end of the video, because this is like halfway through the script. I could have edited the script, it's just a text thing. Let's move on, because this is not a useful thing to go off on a tangent about. So, for the purposes of disclosure, since May the 1st, and as of, well, May the 13th, my game has sold 50 copies. This is obviously a lot less than Masochist, which sold a lot more, even despite its initially greater price tag and, in my opinion, less appealing visuals. Now, you might be thinking, well, 50 copies at $2 a copy isn't bad, that basically makes you back the Steam Direct fee. But unfortunately, that's not actually the case. You see, uh, another mistake, I put the game at a 40% launch discount. Which means that about 40 of those 50 copies are only worth a little over $1. So for the time being, I'm at a net loss. That does suck, but really I've only got myself to blame in this case. I'm not really super upset about it because, I mean, obviously I've learned some lessons from that and I'm definitely not going to do, well, a lot of the things I did ever again. So, why did Mushroom the Ruckus only sell 50 copies? There are quite a few reasons, and I'm pretty sure a lot of them are because my marketing was pretty bad. Pretty much all of the marketing I did was a half-hearted YouTube video, which some of you might have seen, and a bad trailer, which, again, some of you might have seen. And I also sent some copies to some Steam curators. If I was actually smart, and if I did this, uh, you know, much better than I did, I would have taken maybe an extra month or so, worked on the game a little bit more slowly, and actually marketed it properly as I was working on it. Now, in my defense, I did show some gifts on Twitter, which netted me maybe maybe 15 to 20 followers over the course of two weeks. But unfortunately, those weeks were not actually re uh, leading up to release day. Those were like uh, April 1st to April 14th, so about two weeks before release day. Even my real life friends, who are usually, well, I'd say pretty clued into what I do, just honestly had no idea that my game was being released on May the 1st, because pretty much until the day before release, it was only ever, like, something that I thought. It was only ever, like, an internal release date, um, and I think you can sort of uh, assume what the issues were with that. Nobody had any idea. So on April 30th, I tweeted something along the lines of, oh yeah, by the way, game's coming out tomorrow. 
which is like the worst way to build hype since I only have a little under 200 followers and I'm pretty sure at least 50 of them are bots. Um, so that aside, I should have also made proper YouTube videos that document the process a little bit more, which is kind of why I'm doing this now because I am kicking myself for not tapping this free bank of 800 people who signed up for regular notifications about my work and for some reason I didn't decide to utilize that. So there's that, but one more thing I might add, which isn't marketing related really, is the price point. Now the, the thing is that my game maybe wasn't worth any more than two dollars, I mean there's not actually that much content, but I think that people will believe that your game has more value if it's priced higher. Like people don't really think of games in terms of value for money, uh, and they won't really pay attention to a smaller product for smaller money because they perceive it as being disposable or worth less. Um, it's kind of, you can think of it kind of like a, like a pyramid, there's like a lot of really cheap games with a tiny thing, uh, tiny price tag, so people will think, well I could just buy a different one, and it's probably going to be better. Um, I don't know if I explained that very well, that wasn't even scripted, that's just me talking absolute nonsense. But, back to the script, I think that the solution to this is just to make slightly bigger games. Nothing too big, but games that would maybe fit a $5 price tag. Also, I have to learn to think in terms of dollars, which is just wonderful, because I don't use that currency in my country. Now, this bit is probably going to be a bit more technical, so if you don't care about Godot or the Godot engine, feel free to leave now. However, don't, because watch time is apparently a relevant statistic for something. I think it lets me do ads if I get enough, so st keep watching, don't stop. Now, the transition from Godot 3 to Godot... Uh, uh, the transition to Godot 3 from Godot 2.1 is one of the smoothest things I have ever done. It is legitimately so much nicer to use, it's slick, it's nice, the audio bus system is really good, and it's honestly better than the weird not slick UI and whatever weird audio, audio system that Godot 2.1 uses, which also I recall being pretty buggy. Um, also Godot 3 has native support for auto tiling. It's not particularly well documented at the moment, so I had to spend a while figuring, it out, uh, figuring out how to use it. But now that I know, it's actually really convenient, although a little bit buggy with certain fringe cases, namely things like collision shapes. Sometimes it'll uh, freak out when I'm like saving it, saving it as a resource. But speaking of bugs, let's discuss the trail effect after the player dashes. Now in Mushroom the Ruckus, there is a sort of there's a dash effect that you uh, that you could unlock. Uh, you can right click and you will well you will dash and it leaves behind a little trail. So I thought, yeah, trail effect, let's do that. After a little while I was googling some impl implementations of something and I found an, a nice tutorial that uses a line 2D node. And for those of you who don't know, that is a fairly bare bones node thing. It just draws a line. You give it some points and it will draw a line between all those points. Now some of you, some of the more experienced viewers here might be thinking, hey, you should use the particle system, which is like a thousand times better for that. And yeah, yeah it is. You are absolutely right, but for some reason I didn't realize that. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that in one of the, like the pre, before Godot 3 was even released, uh, the maintainers were teasing videos of like particle trail effects, they're showing all these lovely things. And for some reason, that, it still didn't click with me that actually, yeah, let's use particles and not line 2D nodes. So anyway, I created a line 2D and I made it sync up nicely and everything, but in a pixel art game, I should really make an, I should really make the line 2D node actually display in a pixely way. So I thought, well, that's alright, I can add a pixel shader. Well, that didn't work. For whatever reason, it just turned the line white. I wanted to make sure that it, it wasn't just that my shader was broken, so I applied it to a normal sprite, and it worked perfectly. It pixelated the shader, everything was in working order. I reapplied it to the line, not pixelated at all, it was just white. I must have spent like at least an hour, probably more, just trying to deal with that and figuring out why even modulating it didn't make it any less white. But after a small breakdown, I came to the idea uh, that I would create a slightly larger line object that is given the exact same data as the other one and it behaves in the exact same way, but it is ever so slightly bigger and it uses a screen space shader instead. Uh, and it would just pixelate anything below it, but because it is given the exact same data and position and everything, 
the only thing below it would be the line node. And this actually works. It is really hacky, and then if you look carefully, you can actually see that it does mess with the ground a little bit around the trail effect, but I mean, it works, and that's not particularly noticeable, so I, I'm not really complaining. Uh, and lastly, it seems that Godot 3.0.2 actually does have some problematic bugs on Ubuntu. I talked about it a little bit in a forum post that was made in the community hub for my game on Steam, and I still can't really figure out what the problem is, but it just seems to occur with the Unity Desktop Manager, and it just it seems to seg fault when new game is selected in the main menu. Um, I, I, I looked on GitHub, there were some bug reports for similar issues, so I didn't make a proper one. Um, I suppose the point of this section is just to beware, uh, maybe keep that in mind. I think that a lot of these growing pains will be fixed in 3.1 or even 3.03, .03, but for the moment they are, they are a little problematic and, I mean, obviously, uh, hope, I think I'm pretty sure the build, uh, future builds of Godot 3 are set to be backwards compatible with each other anyway, so the next build of the engine that is uh, released as stable, I'll just import the project and export it again, push the update, um, and hopefully that will um, give me some, uh, that'll, that'll fix some bugs that might come up. Um, I mean, with all the complaining that I just did about the engine for the past like five minutes, I want to reiterate that yeah, engine's pretty cool, I really like it. I, I, I've made some successful contributions to the repo recently. Uh, I am slowly climbing my way up to being listed as a developer in the authors.md uh, little file on the um, in the repo. I think that requires 10 commits, so I'm only at like 6. Um, that's pretty cool. Now before I go off on too much more of a tangent, I'll end it here. So thanks for watching, and stay tuned for a video regarding my next project. I have exams. I can't do this to myself. This isn't good. Although actually not I don't think my ne my next project is going to be next time. I think that's probably going to be an auto tiling tutorial. That's a spoiler for my next video. Enjoy that one.